Hello, and welcome back to the house in Fata Morgana. It's been a little bit since I last recorded. Uh, hopefully we'll get some sessions off today. Although, maybe not today. I might have to record more tomorrow. But for now, it's a one-off because I forgot to uh, get a fifth video in for the week. So we're, we're doing this on a little bit of a short notice. It's fine. I'm sure everyone will understand. <laughs> so, without further ado. <coughs> My breast, my, ooh, <laughs> my best British voice. I wanted to say British and best, not breast. That's, I'm not thinking about chicken, okay? Or any other <laughs> stuff. Anyways, you shut up. The white-haired girl turned back, bewildered, to find Nelly smiling at her. The corners of her mouth turned up into a self-assured grin. There was no trace of timidity or uncertainty in her demeanor. Her flaxen eyes seemed like they would they would look nicely. They would look nice under the light of the sun. I said that. Almost the exact opposite of the white-haired girl. He <laughs> he. I want to talk to you actually. Bet y'all missed that one. But mother never was one to share. I asked her to trade maids, but she wouldn't have it. Trade? You mean for... Hehe, <laughs> which is why I decided to completely redecorate my room. Because then I would need some extra hands. I grow six extra hands? But why? Why would you grow six extra hands? Because mother and father refuse to tell me anything. Why is that? Who are you exactly? Where did you come from? Tell me what house are you from? I... I... Why can't you tell me? If we took you in, you must be from a fairly decent family. As a, rem as a member of the Rhodes family, I have a right to know. Do I not? You can't expect me to welcome a girl into my home who won't even tell me where she came from. I don't know anything about you. I haven't seen you at parties. At any parties, I'm... The white-haired girl. <laughs> I, I came from another country. Another country? But none of those exist outside of Britain. What country? Somewhere very, very far away. Oh? North of here? East? West? South? Um, Transylvania, actually. I'm a vampire. <laughs> Vampires come from Transylvania, right? I'm not making that up. <laughs> I hope I'm not making that up. Be kind of embarrassing if I were. Um, south. It's it's south from here. As in, like, south of the ground we're standing on. As in, from the Earth's core. I crossed the sea to get here, which is why we've never met before. Well, that's just stupid. <laughs> why are you so stupid? How far did you have to travel then? How many times did the sun rise? And how many stormy nights did you face? Well, kind of bold to assume that there's any weather issues. Innumerable nights and days we sailed, heading ever, even further north. Huh. Oop. Forget the uh, scrolling the middle mouse wheel will bring up the transcript, I think. So tell me. Ah, uh, Lady Nelly. That is a most wonderful painting. She just tried to brush me off. I won't let her get away that easily. Painting? It's in my room, so of course it's wonderful. But that... that one's especially so. You're both so adorable. You, Lady Nelly... Lord Mel, <laughs> how old were you when it was painted? Huh? 
Ah, that painting. Goodness, yes, you have a good eye for art. <laughs> it is magnificent, isn't it? This was done when I was four and Mel was seven. You see how we're standing next to each other, holding hands? Yeah, a beautiful, beautiful painting. Love the face work on that one. I was too young to remember it very well, but Mel looks like he was really embarrassed. You can tell from the way his head bobbles and nothing else. But standing there like statues makes for a boring painting. Nellie explained brightly. She glowed and was just completely, like, unseeable because of how bright she was. Everyone had to wear glasses, sunglasses even. Having completely forgotten where she was pressed up against, uh, for, whoa, forgotten she was pressed up against the white-haired girl, she did a little twirl, stopping to face the portrait. Though many paintings lined the walls of her room, Nellie was most fond of the one of her and her brother. Two darling siblings standing side by side, the older brother smiling kindly and the younger sister sweetly tilting her head, her cheeks the color of fresh-picked apples. It was like the very embodiment of their happiness. A painting lays its subject bare, you know, fortune and misfortune, happiness and sorrow, enshrined on canvas for all to see. And this reflection is not merely limited to the point in time it was made either. Where'd the music go? Uh, did you know, Master, that paintings are alive? They are drawn with a brush over an extended stretch of time, unlike ph photographs, which capture a singular moment. The two have their own individual merits, but a photograph is still while a painting moves. Portraits reveal both the past and the present state of those they depict. Heh <laughs> Why would a camera not be able to do that either? I, I don't know, it's kind of lost me on the comparison. But anyways, excuse me. Mel and I have always been close. I would sing songs for him, and he would teach me all about... All... Uh, I really cannot speak tonight. I am so sorry. My brain is a little... <laughs> is a little fried. I have not gotten much sleep in the past few nights, so uh, some circuit boards are going haywire right now. And he would teach me about all sorts of things. He's so smart. Nowadays, Mel hardly even goes on walks with me, making excuses like, oh, I'm an adult now. But we used to spend a lot of time playing together in the Rose Garden. I see. The white-haired girl normally had difficulty smiling, but her lips naturally curled upward as Nellie reminisced. A vision of the two happy siblings had probably swelled up in her mind, and I imagine there was a faint trace of envy in her heart as well. Lady Nellie, you love Mo Lord Mel quite deeply, I see. Yes, of course I do! Mel's smart, and he's studious, and he's incredibly kind. For my birthday, he gave me this wonderful rose necklace. The jewelry shop he got it from is famous because even the royal family makes commissions from their workshop. So he had to order it. He had to have ordered it months in advance. Years even. Millennium. Just for me. <laughs> He's a prince, and I'm his princess. Don't you say that line. Oh? <laughs> He's pretty charming, wouldn't you say? Like a prince charming, a regular prince charming. That's why I call him my prince. But you know what? Mel is a terrible dancer, and he still hasn't got his feet on the ground yet. And he's so bad at interacting with girls. So there's no one else who would say that about him. He is quite the gentleman. I assumed women would be drawn to him. Gentlemen? Ha! Huh. Have you met Mel already? This morning, briefly. 
You bitch! <laughs> that reminds me, Mel seemed to know about her too. Um, did I have that thought out loud? What do you think about Mel? I, um, as I said, he is a gentleman. That's not what I mean! Don't think I'll let you get away with putting any funny ideas in his head. What? Mel is too trusting. He's pure of heart, so I won't stand for you trying to take advantage of him. I, I would never. So you say, but you actually want to get close to him. I wouldn't dream of it, Lady Nelly. He's a man far beyond my reach. You aren't planning to do anything, are you? Not at all. And you don't have any romantic feelings for him, do you? What? Well, um... Well, do you? I have no romantic feelings for him, Lady Nelly. And you won't develop any? I, I will not. And with that, Nelly gave a wide, satisfied grin. Even though one has no way of knowing how another truly feels, or how they might in the future. Haha, <laughs> you wouldn't, would you? Now that I think about it, there are plenty of other boys. You getting together with Mel is downright absurd! Indeed. Ah, but anyway, back to what we were talking about earlier. Your family, I almost forgot. I, um... You haven't told me exactly where you came from, or anything about your... Oh. Lady Nelly, I've brought a new carpet. Just look at the embroidery. A work of a true artisan. I'm simply in love with it. Surely you will find it to your liking as well. Wow, you're right! That's a Florentine stitch, isn't it? I wonder whether someone mimicked the style, or if it was imported. Or impo imported. I don't know why I had such weird emphasis on that word. Either way, great find! Let's hurry up and get it laid out. Oh, and we'll have to see how the colors go with everything else. We have to finish redecorating quickly so I can show Mel. He'll be so surprised. What wonderful taste you have, Nelly! <laughs> when the other Abigails returned, so too did the bustle within Nelly's room. As the white-haired girl watched, a faint smile crossed her lips. Perhaps it was from relief at having escaped Nelly's inquisition. Or perhaps... Something darker. Something swelling. Oh god. <laughs> uh, Alright, how did I do this? Ah, Nelly, I'm back. Did you eat something you're not supposed to, dearest Mel? You're unusually cheerful. I, I'm the same as always. Anyway... Never mind that, dearest Mel. Take a look at my room. I redecorated it today. So that's what you've been doing hiding away in the house all day, Nelly. How is that any different from what you were doing? You were in the church all day. I guess. I will look at your room, I promise, but first... Uh, do you know where the new maid is? Now, now, don't get any strange ideas. I just haven't had the chance to introduce myself. And I thought I should, as a member of the family. Uh-oh, he's... Uh, he's getting caught in a lie. Except you have, and I know it. Being the eldest son, it would be shameful if we, she were to pass me in the halls without knowing who I am, so... Don't ask me. What? But you were in the house all day. She attends to Mother, so why would I know where she is? Though she did help redecorate my room. You made her help? That's work for the manservants. 
There were there was no reason to make the maids do it. Oh, so you're saying I should invite a bunch of men into my room? I go into your room all the time, Nellie, and you were in my bedchamber just this morning. Only one man is allowed in my bedroom, dearest Mel, and that is you. So unless you became a servant, which I will not stand for, I will not ask any of them for help. Oh, Nellie, you ought to be a little more... A little more what? If you're going to lecture me, I won't hear it! What am I going to do with you, my little lady? What? What? Why are you looking at me like that? We talked about you, dearest Mel. And I'm not going to tell you what she said. About me? What did she say? Hmm. <laughs> Please, Nelly. She said, Mel's a big stinky doo-doo butt. She said she has no romantic interest in you. Well, why did that even come up? Because we're both girls. We talk about things like what kind of boys we like and who's the most handsome. Oh. <laughs> Why do you look so downtrodden, dearest Mel? You look like a sad little boy who can't get his crush to notice him. That face is unbecoming of a prince, Mel. Are you interested in her? That's strange. You haven't even met... I am not. It's just depressing to find out that someone you've never even met doesn't like you. That's all. And fade to black. Alright. We will pick up with what the white-haired girl is going to say next time on Hooky Hour. Uh, until then, I will be seeing you later. Bye!